Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dial the Gate, the Stargate Oral History Project. This is episode 177. My name is David Reed. Thank you so much for, for joining me. It's a privilege to have you. Uh, we have Glynis Davies this episode. You will know her as Catherine in 1969, Ambassador Noor in... Um, uh, Homecoming, Season 7, and my personal favorite, Eli's mom, Marianne Wallace in Stargate Universe. Before we bring Glynis in, uh, if you enjoy Stargate and you want to see more content like this uh, appear on YouTube, please click that like button. It makes a difference with the show and will continue to help us grow our audience. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend and... If you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. And giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment the new video drops, and you'll get my notifications of any last-minute guest changes. Sometimes these live shows, sometimes we have to reschedule. And clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next few weeks on both the Dial the Gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels. As this is a live episode, we have Glennis joining us uh, live, so if you are in the YouTube chat right now, you can submit questions over to my uh, moderating team, and they will be happy to get those over over to me, and we will then uh, ask them of Glennis. Tracy and uh, Anthony are available uh, in there now, but uh, while we let the moderators get to your questions, I have some questions of my own with Glennis Davies, uh, one of the few actors to be in all three television uh, stargate uh, television adaptations how are you glennis i'm very well thank you i'm excited to be here <laughs> i i appreciate you coming in you have uh, a long history uh with this show um you've played a lot of uh, part two particular iconic characters particularly uh Catherine langford which was uh who was carried over from the feature and of course eli's mom um <laughs> thank you so much for being here and how did you know that this was what you wanted to do with your life be an actor when did that really become your passion when did you know that that's what you wanted right right um i was 16 uh and i it was high school doing plays in high school um i guess i the first one i did was a bernard shaw play passion mm -hmm. Poison and petrifaction. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I I guess I just I I did it and and I got accolades and and um, my dad seemed to truly approve of what I was doing, so I thought okay. And then I just you know I just kept I I, I just kept it up. Like I I I, I honestly I, I fell into it and it just felt right for me. So. Um, I did a little one woman show in high school and Oh wow. That, yeah, and that won me awards in a in a competition and then um I I I I I I almost I I was accepted at theater school and then I I ended up not going because I was I got a job at what was then the St. Lawrence Center in Toronto now the Bloom Pal I guess is called and um, so I was there as an apprentice and worked with some fantastic people for a couple of years. And um, and I went to the BAM School of Fine Arts and then I, I studied for a long time, many years, um, with a group at the time. It was called CAST, the Center for Actors Study in Toronto, head by Kurt Reese. And uh, a lot of us went went through that workshop that program um and i certainly did for years and you know there met some great actors um and we all you know remember each other and uh you know a couple of, you know very rarely do we have a conversation these days where we don't bring up kurt's teachings and you know so uh i i, I was 16 and i never looked back there are important people in our lives that change us in ways that uh, we don't often expect. And teachers play such a huge part in that, especially ones that that get us and um, what it was that we're trying to achieve. And those of us who want uh, those who want to cultivate what they see in us and, and make us better people uh, than when we first show up. 
and cultivate right. a talent. It, was he that for you? Oh, he was most definitely that yeah. for me, Kurt Reese. Yeah, he is. He's no longer with us, but he was he was difficult, but he was <laughs> very influential. And my my literally my high school theater teacher, Jenny LaRiche, um, she she was like that for me. But um, and gosh, I mean, um, I, I've I've had some great teachers, Carol Rosenfeld. Um, uh, Cameron Thor, uh, ah. Larry Moss, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Is um, there a? Can you tell me of a of a specific role that you've had over the years that that pushed you, that stretched you, that um shaped you in in ways that you didn't anticipate or ways that that forced you to be um pushed out of a, a comfort zone. I want to say all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Need you yeah. to narrow it down a little. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I Tom Macbeth you know, once told me I don't accept a role if it doesn't scare me. Yeah, well who said yeah. that? Tom Macbeth. Oh, okay. Good yeah. for Tom. Yeah. Um I, I guess there's sometimes little quirky things that I end up doing. Um, like I did, um, oh God, I, I did this crazy old woman junkie lady in uh, the Joel Kinnaman, what what was it called? The big sci-fi series. Oh, that was that uh, Altered Carbon? Or Altered Carbon, yeah. Okay. Um, that was pretty out there. Um, but that was just sort of a brief, you know, little, mm -hmm. um, oh boy. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I love this little kid series that I did, um, Spooksville. Um, mm -hmm. w one of the episodes I had to do this fabulous fight scene that was definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, but it turned out really well. Um, Principal Blackwater. Interesting. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. There uh, are. Go ahead. No, you go. I, yeah. We can you tell me about uh, uh, first getting involved in Stargate, your first episode, season two, 1969. You're taking on a, a, a role that has already been played by three different performers. You're number four. The first right. two were in the movie. And then yeah. Elizabeth Hoffman was uh, in. Uh, two episodes of season one, and then you were brought in to play Captain yeah. Langford in season two, in yeah. in the year nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, that's right. So, I think that was that the first one that I did, or was the Ambassador Nor? The Ambassador Nor came in season seven, five years okay. later. Right. Okay. So, that was one of the first shows that I did in Vancouver. Um, so that sort of I I I remember oh, I just remember Amanda just being so great and she she just you know she just brings you right down to earth and um I I was just sort of pretty fascinated by the whole process but I I didn't really know much about it so um because I I I, I hadn't seen much of Stargate. So uh, we, you know, we'd been auditioning for the show and it was, it was always very tricky dialogue and mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of it very technical. And, um, but um, yeah, Catherine was great. I really loved it that, you know, you sent me 1969 and, and uh, boy, that was a great little show. It's a great I hour of television. Loved it. Yeah. It it, yeah. it exemplifies what uh, it, it really in one episode what the show is is all about, which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, not just a group of people going on adventures together, but a, a group of heroes that we just love to watch who just yeah. click well together. Oh, absolutely! So, yeah, and, um, it just it didn't feel dated, really. It just I mean, we watch a lot of time travel, and we're so you know, acclimatized to all of that now. But uh, I it just really took me there. I really thought, wow, what would it be like to, you know, um, right. I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Do you um, uh, 
recall your speaking of time travel uh travelers brad's brad's other show do you recall yeah. uh jacqueline peel in that uh, mm-hmm. in that series yeah that was that was great i was so lucky um to get that and um you know the first episode i did it was helen shaver and um helen was just great i uh, you know, again, I mean, it wasn't, I, I just had read the, the the one episode, so I really didn't know where it was going. I didn't know where Jacqueline was going. I, um, but that was, uh, I, I just felt right at home, you know, the, uh, um, you, sometimes you just have to trust where you're, you're being placed. And right. yeah, I, I, I really feel that, you know, like, um, you know, I've done a fair bit of sci-fi, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not really a sci-fi. I don't, I, I don't watch a whole lot of it, but um, I don't know. I, I, I seem to end up there. So, and uh, so. <laughs> well, sure. You know, I mm-hmm. think it's a, a part of proximity. You know, it's uh, what is is frequently done in um, in Vancouver, Vancouver, and a lot of the people who are involved in it are uh, a lot of the same folks. You yeah, know? and and much of it is, you know, you you enjoy working with someone. You you want to work with them again. I uh, know, and that's great, and and that is just the best feeling. You know, I'm I'm actually working on, yeah, some. I, I suppose I I can't talk about. It. I'm not allowed to. But again, it's like it's, it's some of the same people, and I just go, oh wow, how great is that? You know? Another sci-fi project? No, it's not. This one's okay. not. So, yeah. Okay, but I the. The, the same people come back around in your life sooner or later again, a, a number of them again and again. That's that's one of the great things that I love about uh, about this industry. Sooner or later, you're gonna you're co- gonna connect with someone who's like, oh yeah, I made yeah. A, you know there's there there little little signposts in your in your past, and yeah. uh, and Stargate does does that all, especially for a show that lasted a franchise that lasted for TV franchise seventeen seasons. You know something right. was working. Something was right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So you yeah. um uh came back in uh uh SG one uh as Ambassador Nor in uh, season seven of the series. This was a character from a planet who had um uh the, a, a nuclear bomb had basically been dropped on them. And she right. was coming in as uh a delegate from one of the nations that this technology had been used against her. Um, do you remember anything about that shoot that stands out? I, I, I don't. Oh, I, I remember working with the, the wonderful Jillian Barber. Mm. Um, I, I, um, I, I don't, I remember slapping <laughs> The guy. Um, I I don't really. I'm sorry. I don't. Yeah, you I, hit the guy hard in the face. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's ever forgiven me. For that. Did you actually hit him? I I think I did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Who was that? Jan Jan uh, Bro- Bros. I think his name is. Uh, let me see okay. here. I can find out pretty quickly. Um. So Ambassador Nor was in Homecoming, and you were along. I think it was Jillian Barber as Draylock. Yeah. yeah. And then you had you hit Jan. Is it Bose or Boz? Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it might be Bose. Yeah. Right across the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Political machinations. You know. Yeah. 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 Jeez, what a trip. Uh, yeah. tell us about getting Eli's mom, that role. Well, that was, um, that was, you know, the old days when we went into the little trailer to, uh, to audition in person. Um, right. The before times. The before times. Yeah. (laughs) I I just went up there. I I think it was, um, Carol Kelsey, I believe cast the first two. And then this, this, um, I, I, I believe it was Clark and Page there. Fabulous. Um, yeah, it was I just went in and uh read um a tiny scene. I I, I um I I think it might have been like the, the the little scene um 
it's it's a dream sequence that Eli has where I'm waking him up in the morning and telling him to get on with it. And um, I think it was just that little scene right there. Yeah, he was remembering uh, once he's once he's aboard the ship. Yeah, uh, he's remembering uh, living at home under his mom's roof and yeah. kind of not being motivated to become it, it, it reach his full potential and right. he's got right. his mother who has uh been uh, uh infected with hiv and mm-hmm. you know she's basically you know still being mom to this grown adult who just refuses to get on with his life you know a yeah. lot of people can relate to that yeah so that was um oh yeah that was just a perfect situation i love that little scene too but i I I think that was um, I I I think that was the one that I got the part for, and I think I went back for, for a callback as well. And then I do believe that th- that was Andy Makita that that that's correct. Shot, that right, yeah. And um, I think that was the first scene I did okay. in the series. Yeah, and then then I went back and did the scene in the kitchen Over the oh, phone. Oh, I, I did on the phone yeah. and then yeah and, and then I went back and did the the scene in the kitchen and um I I yeah I just remember sitting sort of outside of the house and um uh Robert Carlyle came up to me and welcomed me and 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 I thought oh this is nice so <laughs> again they just make you feel at home so absolutely yeah. you uh yeah. worked mostly opposite david blue who played who played your son yeah. eli yeah uh, any memories of working with david oh god yeah like um oh he was just great he was he was just he was just eli he was just david <laughs> you know he really was um you know sort of fumbling about and you know then just nailing it or 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 not and try he was just great very friendly and lovely and um yeah i really liked him he says hello by the way oh does he oh wow i i I emailed him let him know that you were coming i said oh please tell us hello for me so he's a good guy uh and you're right he the the cast like never let him forget that you are basically that character (laughs) That really is him, the gamer yeah. type, the sci-fi type. So it wasn't it, a lot it, to take it, him to get into it. Right, right. I, I, I never quite knew if he was the math boy that um, he, uh, that he was playing. I, you know, I don't know. But in terms of the math, I'm not entirely sure. But the the sci-fi and and the gamer, um, he streams yeah. on Twitch to this day, playing video games. So it was very appropriate oh. that they found that they found a guy that could really. You know, exemplify yeah. that. What was yeah, it like yeah. playing this uh, uh, person who is talking to the Air Force, talking to a person who is, I mean, he's sitting in front of you, but the person that you're talking to is in the show someone else. We're kind of like seeing yeah. like who's under the surface, whose soul we're watching almost. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to be uh, conscious of that fact going along that, yeah, I, I'm – talking yeah. to him but i'm really talking to someone else who's who yeah. who is he's pretending to be someone else there's a lot of levels at play here in these in these kitchen scenes i know i know i was thinking about that one in watching it I, I i was wondering um you know with the with the, in the hospital scene um later oh. in the it was in which one was that gauntlet? No, not gauntlet. The one before. The uh, uh, let me double check here. So that was that would have been like one of the. That's the episode where you board the ship, and I believe yeah, that, that, that is one pathogen. That Robert, pathogen. Yeah, that was the one yes. Robert directed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, playing with the. I I thought it worked really well in the kitchen. Um, you know when. They, they they first meet, but <laughs> I just kind of wanted her to um to give 
over a little bit in the hospital. <laughs> she was just like, there's no way was she letting this guy no. get to her. Yeah, yeah. No. She couldn't believe uh, that it was her son talking yeah. to her. And no matter I, what this guy said, he was like, no, th this is ridiculous. This I know it's not, not going to happen. And I know and they set it up really well. And, and I love this with, with the be prior to the, the first scene. Um, what when he said when Blue or when Eli says um, they he goes home for the first time and he says she's never gonna get this she can't follow an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's I know. Right. I know. And I thought, okay, good. I'm I'm at home here because you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I like that. That was really funny. The, yeah. the, the the well the situation that she's thrown in is i mean just wild i mean the 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 this the opening scene with her i think is very telling she's like are you an airplane you sound like you're in an airplane so yeah. she can't uh, like 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 eli says you know she can't she can't follow an episode of star trek her mind is just not going these places yeah. and we can only put ourselves in her shoes to be like wow what a wild situation to have your child across the other end of the cosmos not yeah. be able to talk to you using his own face how do you communicate with someone like that and then when you're yeah. in the hospital bed at, at death's door and you've got a stranger saying that he's your son you just can't process it i know i know it was a lot to process but yeah she yeah i, I always felt with that phone call too she I, I think she was in a place with her son where she just wanted him to do something. Right. Get on with it. Oh boy, um, will he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was talking with my dad. Uh, my dad is is uh, former U.S. military retired, uh, oh. and he had uh, frustration with with the fact that in the story she's only going to get the care that she needs because they they can't afford the treatments that, yeah. that she needs. Yeah. She's only going to get it if Eli goes off on this mission. Right. Uh, and that always made him a little bit uncomfortable because it was like they were dangling a carrot in front of in front of him because it's like, if, if you go and do this, then, you know, we're going to take care. I suspect they probably would have regardless after that. But um, it was it, it's just it was one of the little things that that bothered him. But I mean, he does go off on this mission. He gets trapped out there. And uh, even though she is getting the uh, the health care that she needs, she is then in a position where she is losing her battle because she has been cut off from her son. And mm -hmm. God knows what she she thinks he's thinking of her being being out of contact. This was these were two people who were really close. Yeah, yeah. And they're kind of yeah because they, they you know the father was estranged yeah. and uh, yeah you really felt for her I um and you know and then you know I gotta say I totally bought it when she shows up <laughs> one of my yeah. favorite scenes in the yeah. show maybe top five in, oh. in terms of like a, a payoff for a storyline mm -hmm. because uh. Ming-Na Wen's character, Camille Ray, says, you know, I'm not I'm not asking you guys. I'm telling you, you know, we need this boy to have yeah. his mind in the game. Get her, get That's his mom right. on yeah. the ship and get him past this. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like to to have that payoff in in the episode to finally make eye contact with him yeah. and be like, OK, now at least I know. Yeah, he's in. Uh, he's not on an airplane. <laughs> It felt exactly like it played. It really yeah. did. It, was, it just didn't. There was no acting required. Um, it just, it was so exciting that day. Yeah, it really was. Um, yeah, no, it was just, it just, yeah, the, the, yeah, it seems like that. They, they just play, you know. Well, because they're real. Yeah. You know, given that despite their circumstances, you know, it's, um, uh, the the mother and son dynamic there comes comes straight through. Even though she's in someone else's body at that point, it's like well. I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Jennifer Spence. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and of course we'd had the scene in in the work in the hospital, the scenes in the hospital. So, um, 
Yeah, it was just very, very real. I mean, I loved the show Stargate Universe for the relationships um, amid all this, you know, science and everything else that's happening. All of the stuff. <laughs> It's what the it, it's it's what the show is about. It's about those characters, you know. Yeah. The 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 situation that they're in is what what you may tune in for, but you're going to you're going to stay for the for the people yeah. that you're watching. Yeah. They're what matter most. Well, I think it's always got to be that. It does for me anyway, but I yeah, and there's some great television out there these days, but uh, you know, mhm. Mm is there so you're working on this um uh, uh, undisclosed project. You're you're staying busy there. Anything else uh, that uh, you can you can share about what's coming on down the pike? Or well, I just had a couple of just a lucky, um, uh, you know, lucky couple of things toward the end of the year at la and then it's going into the new year. But right. apparently, I'm not to. I can't talk about it. But okay. um, no, what else have I done? Um, Oh, I, I, oh God, you know, COVID has just been so rough I know. with everybody, right? So I did, um, throughout COVID, I did um, a million little things. I had a couple of scenes on that. I went and I did a great show, a uh, Vancouver show here, uh, Family Law, um, Susan Nielsen's show, which is, is terrific. And um, I, in 20... 2020, I went to England um, and did a couple of scenes on Jurassic World. I was so tickled to see you there. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Glennis. Uh, yeah. That was wild. Yeah. So that was fun because it was right in the thick of lockdown and wow. I, I was traipsing off to England. So <laughs> that was, was it a two week quarantine? Uh, no, seven days. Seven in the, days at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they get, they get you there. They take you to the hotel, this fabulous place we stayed, and um, so I was in the hotel for seven days, allowed to walk the grounds with a mask on, um, and uh, you know everybody was there, so it was kind of fun. That's cool. I've got a, a a few fan questions here for you, if you don't okay. mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lock Watcher wants to know um, you were you were in season two of SG One, season nine of SG One, and then and then Stargate Universe. I think I may have misspoken earlier about being in Atlantis because I there's there's no yes, I don't Atlantis. think I was in. Yeah. You weren't in Atlantis. Um, mm -hmm. Was there a, a difference uh, in production from SG One to Universe? Did you notice, or did it really feel organically this the same? Was there any had they when universe came about they were lighting it very differently it was much oh, more yeah, dark yeah. more realistic did you notice any changes i well i i wouldn't have i i honestly wouldn't have known at the time um but when i watched it i could yeah. certainly see the difference um Absolutely. you know the lighting in universe was fantastic um I, gosh, I, you know, with 1969, I, I, I wouldn't have been aware of it. I, I, I just didn't, you know, uh, like I, I really didn't know how to read the room as far as the lighting and, uh, you know, like that, but I, I certainly noticed, um, a huge difference between, uh, SG one and universe definitely. Universe had they pulled out all the stops for that, not just in the lighting, but the the simple little camera tricks with the mirrors between you and Jennifer yeah. Spence and the yeah. miming because it's all just done in camera, just just the angle of the mirror. Jennifer's standing yeah. over your shoulder, you know, uh -huh. and you're. I, I love little yeah. tricks like that. Yes, yeah. so it was simple. amazing. It, yeah, it was really technical. I, I mean, I, I don't know what they're what what they used to shoot it but it that show looks better than most shows that were on these days yeah they were really ahead of the curve mm -hmm. um anthony wanted to know did you do any research into hiv aids uh when you found out about uh eli's mom's situation did well you look, did you look um, into that at all yeah i mean you always do right I, i'm you know i sort of played um like just around, it was just 
prior to doing that, I had um, a building that I was, the apartment building that I was living in, I lived next door to a guy who had AIDS and, mm. um, you know, I watched him decline. And oh, so, yeah, yeah I really kind of, you know, saw that. Um, but and no, I, I was, I, I was just sort of, you know, mystified by how it happened to her, you know, because she was junkie. a nurse. She, yeah, junkie that she was trying to protect from, you know, from shooting. And, and, and not so just, you know, just to answer the question, Anthony, just on a, on a personal level from people that I knew. Yeah. Yeah, that was that it it was uh it was a shock because like you said she was a nurse and she was trying to protect this this person and it turned their world upside down. Her husband left. Yeah. Her husband couldn't handle it. You know? Yeah. And it's just these that's yeah. the thing that I loved about Stargate is it gave us the fantastical but it mm -hmm. also gave us you know, things that we could relate to in our ordinary everyday uh, lives that were the, the two yeah. that were juxtaposed with one another. You might not think that those things could work, but they did. Yeah, yeah, totally. So. I, I remember I didn't know that that she I didn't know that she had AIDS uh, when I was first cast. And um, I had done that one scene with with Andy, I remember that day. And then when I went back to do that, I think, I guess it was a phone call scene. Mm -hmm. um, Robert came up to me and, and Robert Cooper, and, and he explained to me um, who this character was and what was going on on the day that we were, we were shooting it. So he, he, you know, he just said this, you know, this is who she is and this is what's happened. And yeah. So that Absolutely. was, good. yeah. Um, the the four there there's rumor there's talk of a fourth uh, uh stargate uh series that that amazon is is uh uh bringing to life with with mgm there's uh we've been hearing all kinds of things for at this point years now if if it is something that uh that ends up being um uh done in in vancouver would you would you be down to to Re either reprise a role or or return oh, for a new no, character. Oh no, I'm I'm way too busy. I've got far better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I really I really liked her. I in in watching her, I just um, I sure would. Uh, oh, Marianne. Like, Marianne. Yeah. 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 The. Uh, uh, there there's only so much that that ties us back to earth in that show yeah. and um i i am so uh uh i loved your performance and uh it it meant so much to have uh that that uh that connection with earth to to help tell the stories of of the principal characters and and you were great and i'm i'm so thankful that you you took time to to talk with us today Oh well, it was great. I loved it. It was lovely to meet you and it was say hi to you. Say hi to Blue for me. I will indeed. Okay. I'm gonna wrap up the show on this end here, but uh, you take care of yourself. All right. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Glennis. Be well. Bye, David. Bye bye. Glennis Davies, uh, Eli's uh, mother, Marianne Wallace, on uh, Stargate Universe. She was Ambassador Nor in uh, Season 7's uh, Homecoming. And, of course, in 1969, she was uh, Catherine uh, Langford. So we have um, coming up uh, n tomorrow, Wormhole Extremists. We're going to be exploring the... Uh, uh, the next two episodes of season two, which were, I believe, Prisoners and The Gamekeeper. While uh, we're on the discussion of uh, the HIV uh, epidemic, uh, I have been invited uh, by Robert C. Cooper. And let me let me double check so that I can um, uh, get the name right here. Jeanette Jones. She is uh, Education Manager, Blood Sisterhood, Hemophilia Federation of 
America. And they are, I don't know if you you are aware, you may be aware uh, that uh, Robert C. Cooper f- created a, a miniseries called Unspeakable, which was about the tainted blood crisis uh, in Canada. They have been having an ongoing conversation about it on uh, YouTube. Part three of Unspeakable uh, is going to be airing, I believe, three days from now. So what's... What is that? What is that day specifically here? I'm trying to. Okay, February the 28th at 7 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. Uh, on their website. I'm shooting completely off the cuff of this. I apologize. And uh, there is their web portal. Whoops. Is the Hemophilia Federation of America over on uh, YouTube? And I'm going to place a link to this in the description below. But that episode is going to be uh, uh, available for streaming, and several people who were involved in the production, uh, including uh, uh, Aaron Douglas and Brian Markinson, both of whom were on Stargate SG-1, will be joining uh, director and executive producer Robert C. Cooper and uh, director Andy Makita for that discussion on February the 28th uh, on their YouTube channel. So please follow the the link and uh, uh, prepare to watch that. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a live show, or uh, if it's pre-recorded, but that is going to be available on their YouTube channel on uh, February the 28th at 7 p.m. I believe that's specific time. So look at the link for the description uh, below and follow uh, up with them. My thanks to Glynis uh, Davies for joining me in this uh, episode, and I really appreciate you tuning in. Next week, we have on our uh, On the Books... Double check here. Patrick Curry, who played Fifth, Chaka, and Iman in Stargate SG-1. Saturday, March the 4th, we have him at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So he's going to come on and discuss, uh, uh, join us to discuss those characters. Fifth is one of my uh, uh, favorites in all of Stargate SG-1. The betrayal of that character in Unnatural Selection is one of the cornerstones of of that show in many choice in many ways for me because those moral episodes man those are the those are the ones that really uh uh show us what the characters are made of so it's going to be great to talk uh, with patrick curry my thanks to my production team linda gategabber fury uh for helping to to make the show possible my moderating team Tracy, Jeremy, Reese, Anthony, and Summer, thank you all uh, for for making uh, this show possible. Big thanks to Frederick Marcoux over at Concepts Web. Uh, he keeps our website up to date. And my thanks again to Glynis Davies for joining us uh, in this episode. She was a treat to have. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. I appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week on the other side.